Hi everyone! I thought today I will do a real time video of me painting this beautiful rose um, instead of my usual time lapse video. So just sit back, relax, enjoy. Um, if you have any questions, just when I upload the video, just in the comments section, and I'll be able to reply. And um, yeah, so I'm starting with this main petal here. It goes all along there. It's quite a big one, this one. Um, so I'm going to take my time in developing the form um, because this is rounded. So when something is rounded, you don't want to um, brush straight. You want to follow the pattern of the petal and that's what will give you form. So I'm going to start with this one here. It's just a little red light. So I'm just using straight from my tube, I'll use the red light. If I want to go a little bit lighter, I could use yellow. This one seems to be more on the pink side. So I'll just add a tiny bit of pink paint that I made. Otherwise, it just seems quite bright and that's not how the reference image is. Usually with um, my first layer, I um, tend to experiment with the colours and then what I'm not happy with, I know to change for the second layer. So most of the time, well actually I shouldn't say most of the time, but sometimes my colours are not always right. But the good thing is about um, art is that the colours don't have to be exactly what you see. You can change it up and it doesn't matter. That's just art. So I painted this section yesterday, um, so it's a little bit wet at the moment. And this one, usually in roses, if there is a really dark sh section, I don't like to use black because most flowers don't have black. Um, it is, it's, it's the actual colour of the flower but in a very darker version so with um, with flowers with red I like to sometimes use a complementary color which will darken my actual color so for example the opposite of red is green which tends to make that a little bit red uh, sorry <clears throat> uh, brown so I tend to use much more of a dark red alizarin crimson just depends on the mood but this one here I use um, red yellow and blue and I actually quite like it because you can see and I added more red in this section so you can see some reds in it so it's not a black it's just a very, very dark red. So 
So at the moment I'm just um, applying the red in some sections. There is a darker red here. If you can, uh, you probably can hear my Dyson in the background. <laughs> um, red contains cadmium. Cadmium is a bit toxic, so you need to work in a ventilated area. Where you can also wear a mask. So anything with cadmium in it you always have to have a window open this one seems a little bit lighter here which is a I like pink it's kind of a purplish color Purple pink. Especially the bottom part here. Thank you also very much for always supporting me. Um, really appreciate all your comments, your likes, your shares. Um, you know, artists are not always the most rich people, so exposure for us is great. Unless I become famous. Also, don't forget, you know, if you can't afford an original but you really like something, I can always offer a print version of my paintings. Just let me know the size that you like and I can give you a quote. I also offer payments by installments for those of you who would like to own an original but can't afford to pay it up front. So I'm pretty flexible. Or if there's a special flower or anything that you would like me to see more, more paintings of, just let me know. This rose really pretty pretty it's got just these different tones 
of these light pinks and this beautiful purple um, I find this quite relaxing at times don't know about you sometimes I like to sit and watch other artists paint not only does it teach me different techniques as well I don't know, just find it quite relaxing There's various tones in here. The petals just giving out some darks, medium, lights. And when you give form to an object, you always need at least more than three colours. Because that is what will give the object the roundness of something. Like I said, this is my first blocking stage, so you know it's not always perfect, and it doesn't have to be. And I usually learn from this stage and then when I do the second layer I'll always have the right colours and know what I need to do or what I shouldn't be doing. It's like, it's like a learning stage every time you do the first layer. It's an experimenting stage. Guys, ever have um, like I said previously, any questions? Just feel free to ask me. I always love to hear from you guys, especially when um, people decide to buy my artwork um, and they call. It's really nice to chat with you guys, get to know you a little bit. I always used to get excited when I used to meet artists. Okay. So, these lines, I usually like to put in these lines. It just gives me an idea where my darks and lights are as well. Um, it just helps so it's less confusing and because I haven't been painting that very long sometimes I still get confused so when I have lines I just find that that helps me a little bit um, I think some of the artists that I follow that have been painting much longer than I have they still do the same they put in lines and stuff just to guide them where things go I 
hope you're having a good day. So this petal is going this way, so always paint in the direction of the petal, never straight because you will get a flat painting. Not sure if any of you who follow me paint in your spare time. If you ever have any questions or you about your own painting and your own progress, I don't mind you guys reaching out. It's fine. Just text me. I love working with reds. I think most of you already know that. Red and yellow. It's beautiful. I don't know. There's something about red. Very vibrant. Very live. It's a very alive colour. And red fits with most decor as well. In a home, don't mind me when I do this. This is not how you're supposed to hold the brush. I use, uh, like, oh, this is another uh, brush that I use. Yeah. Not sure if this is focusing or not. There you go. Um, I like the long handles because it gives you the freedom. You're supposed to hold it out and let the brush kind of guide you. I used to always do like this, like a pencil. But um, that's not how you paint. But these brushes that I use, they're called Bright. So bright means that the hairs on the brush are actually shorter than the flat. The flat ones are a bit higher. I don't usually like to work with long hair because I like to control my strokes. But everybody's different. Most people who um, like to paint loose, they will use a flat brush with the longer hairs This one is going that way. So with this one, I just feel that um, I need to go darker here so even though I was using the darker red sometimes I do have to add a little bit of green 
or a little bit of black in the red just to make it a little bit darker. I don't usually like the brown. And when you do these strokes as well, don't do them all the same length, otherwise it looks a bit silly, the painting, because then it looks like it's always all the same, and that's not what we want. Just I usually use a flicking motion, flick, stop, flick, and flick. But that's a little bit wet at the moment, so I am going to make this darker when I do my second coat. See what I mean? So you learn while you go, you understand what's right and what's not. Now up here, it's a very, it's like this colour, but on a... Um, darker this is like a really dark red violet kind of color so this will give another so then after that I need to put what I'll do with the highlight, I will do that last when it's dry and I will dry brush it. So dry brushing means that I have very limited paint on my brush and it's like a streak, you're streaking it over another colour but being able to see the other colour that's underneath if that makes sense. Or the other way you can do it, um, just get another brush. What I, I could do is there's so many ways that you can do this. So if I was to put the light, I would just start with the dark here. And then you go in and you can actually put the, the highlight in and then you flick and then you wipe your brush go over the, the flick and then so every time you do this you wipe your brush because you don't want the colour to mix in with the top. Flick. And see how it's not covering? Don't stress, just go over it again. Flick. 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 So that's another way you can do it. So many other ways you can do this. I'm holding a brush in my hand that I don't actually need. So um, I'm 
and that one so this color actually comes all the way and comes down and grab some more it's this color is like just gently getting the edges to blend it all looks ugly at the moment this is what we call the ugly stage so like I said it's, there are different ways to create something depending on the type of flower that you're painting This section here is dark, but this is the actual body of the rose here that holds the rose. So this section will be dark because it's under the shadow of this one. So this is a petal. Petal creates a shadow, cast shadow. So we paint that black. Then the light is hitting the rose. So then this one goes a little bit lighter. This one is similar to that one. It's more bright, so that's good. And then I can just use. Now, that one is going like this, it's rounding. blending in with that one so you just touch the edges together slightly and then this one is this color Sometimes when I do the first layer, if I don't like it or don't like a colour, I just change it up and that's okay for you to do that. Just be careful when you go around the darker areas. So that the color doesn't become muddy.
darker section just here. So it looks a little bit scattered. Again, following the form of the petal. If I had to teach a class, I would do step by step, so again, once again, it would be different, my technique, um, just so, especially for beginners and stuff, they'll be getting confused. This is all scattered. I don't know about this colour. Mm, for now, we'll leave it. Like I said, once the whole first layer is complete, if I don't like something, I'll change it. with flowers as well um, colors never have to be exactly the same and this is quite a large petal it goes all the way up here down here so that's the main outer now this one here that's closer to here is this color and then it goes red red here and the here if you're wondering what this is this is actually another petal but it's quite hidden by this petal so all you can see it's all dark there hmm. mind you i should have continued that yesterday so what i'll do i'll just break up the edge here now that I just realized that because I don't want a hard edge here if this color is going to continue here. So sometimes you can use your fingers or your brushes just to break it up. And then this one is mainly hidden. So this one will be dark like that and then blended in with the red dark red here and this one will have a little bit of light which is the light uh, red here so let's continue painting with this with big areas as well I use a larger brush um, this one here I want to blend a bit more so if I don't want to use the same brushes with the colors I usually get a clean brush um, a clean brush and then you always blend the light into the dark you never blend dark into the light because the dark will take over the light and then you gotta start all over again so when I'm blending sections like this I just do very gentle so there is a few techniques but for today I'm just flicking and then I'm wiping my brush on a paper towel and then I start from the top and I flick and then start from the top flick so wiping the brush on a paper towel flick I don't know other people do things differently so and then you know, when I started learning how to paint, I was always like following exactly how other people would paint. But then eventually, you find your own style. You can break the rules. It's 
see how you get that as well sometimes that's sometimes that's nice especially in a rose because it looks like veins but if you don't like it you can remove it and then that one just a bit come down Still brushing and wiping my brush. I am putting a little bit of pressure um, only because I allowed the paint to dry a little bit. Not that it dries that quick, but and if you see like here it's becoming kind of the same, just bring it down a little bit so it doesn't always nothing looks too uniform and that one that dark can come up a little bit just blend those with the this canvas is weird i mean if i paint this way it's really nice because the the how do you call it how it's weeded or how it's um sewn Alright, now brush, clean my brush a little bit thoroughly because I'm going to into the light. And then this one here, it's not really a lot compared to the reference photo. I don't always follow the reference photo. I have an image there, but like I said, always do. I always change it up. Reference photos are there for a guide. Don't rush when you paint, take your time. I used to always rush at the start. It's like, I don't know why I did that, but anyway. Now I just take my time and I actually pay attention to what I'm doing and it's quite relaxing. So don't forget the rose has many veins they're not always visible i mean sometimes when i'm looking at a rose i don't always see their veins depends what stage of the blooming they up to If you get a little bit of colour at the bottom or into the light, don't worry. I always go over it anyway. Gee, I feel like I'm running um, an online class with you guys. <laughs> Been thinking about it. Okay, well that looks alright for now because I don't want to give it too much detail at the blocking in stage. This is just giving me um, an outlook or a visual of what's to come when it's the next layer. Okay, so I might use a bigger brush for this section here. And... I don't think it's that bright, but I can always mix. Sometimes you get these little things in your paints, like dried skin. That's okay. That happens sometimes. That's why it's important to always clean your... Um, 
tubes of paint after each session. You know, it took me a long time to learn how to blend. I think a year of practice. I don't know why, I just found it quite difficult. I think that was mainly with um, acrylics. Is it because acrylics dry much faster. So, um, so then when I swapped to oils, I just found it easier because all your don't dry as quick so you've got a bit of time to play with it. So if I were to run an introduction class in oils, the first lesson will be learning how to blend because people get frustrated. And also how to mix different colours, which most people probably know anyway, but you'd be surprised how much you learn so I probably would want this a bit darker again and once again I start at the edge and I'm flicking, 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 flicking. <laughs> it's a lot of flicking when you're doing flowers. Also, if there's any other paintings that you like and it's already sold, like I said, you can order prints or you can commission me to paint it again for you. I don't mind. I can do paintings on a smaller scale as well. Like really small if you want. So I'm pretty flexible. Okay, so um, with these, when you've got such a different colour and you don't know how to blend, I usually, if I can find my brush, oh here it is, I get an old brush that I've used, something like that, that's been used up. And then I just go around and around the edge, just to soften that edge. And then I might do it again. I wipe my brush. That's why paper towels come in handy. I don't waste a lot of paper towels. Try to use the same one and then And then if you get that, just flick a little bit like that, just to soften the edges. I'm 
Okay. So this one here. Hang on my paper towel completely. I, find, I, I see a lot of artists. God, they waste so much, so much paint, so much paper towels. I'm trying not to be a waster. I feel guilty when I waste our oh, poor earth. Too much rubbish already. Okay, so I'm going to get a clean brush again. And I'm going to do my flicking motion. So, grab, flick, push, flick. So this is quite a large painting that I'm currently working on. This one here is 80 by 80 centimeters. Sometimes if you don't want to see that red, I just go over it gently like this. Or if I don't want the sharp edges, I just go over it slightly and just soft that out. Okay. Sometimes with these edges, if I don't like them too hard, which I don't, not all the time, just go over again on an edge, back and forth. And that and then you can get slightly just go into that colour. Okay. Alright. Well, I think this video is long enough. Um, you get the gist of how I do things. And I will... See you all later. Thank you. Take care.